company. About time I made another video, isn't it? Been a while. Hey, since I saw you, I got myself the best stool. I can sit here. I can twirl. It doesn't go all the way around, but it goes this far. And in and out. It's so important to have the right chair in your work spot. If you don't have it, you're just miserable. The one I brought home from downtown when we had the shop it was high enough there, but when we came down here, my husband built up the bottom of this a little bit. And so it's higher than it used to be. And I always feel like I'm like down in a pit, you know. And that chair's just no good anymore. So I got this one, a little antique shop where Donna has her spot. And it is awesome. I love it. But anyway, today we're going to do two projects. One's an Art Nouveau bracelet with rusty black distressed findings. We haven't done anything with rusty black for a while. I think you're going to like this project. It's easy peasy. Nothing to it. And also we are going to do a steampunk pendant. Oh, it's sort of kind because it has a propeller in it. So if you want to call it steampunk, whatever. It's cute. And we're going to use a spoon. We're going to use this brass spoon from bcboutiques.com that is plated matte black. Which is a really yummy finish. It's like almost like a semi-glossy um, ebony, just a slight sheen to it. Not really gloss, just a slight sheen to it. It's really beautiful. And uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how to cut in half and make this pendant out of it. So I guess the only thing left for us to do is just get to it. So Javi, why don't you bring that camera on back over here and come over my shoulder and let's show them how it's done. So, this is the bracelet we're going to make today. Isn't that pretty? All the Art Nouveau elements. And yet you got a little bit of that dark side rusty stuff going on. That's so pretty. Just such a nice thing. And it's so easy to make. I'm going to show you how. But first, I'm going to lay out the parts. I'm going to leave this one right here. I'm going to lay the parts out for you. So, I need a little circlet. I need... I need this connector, I need this rosette, I need this Art Nouveau lady head, then another rosette, and then another lady head. And as you notice, we're mirroring them. In other words, we're facing them in. If you wanted to, you can put them this way, too, however you like it. But I kind of like them this way. We're not making them going the same way. One points in, one points out. Then we're going to do another rosette, and another little connector, and another circlet. Now, this makes, I'm going to tell you right now, this makes a pretty spacious bracelet. It would fit a large wrist really well. Medium large is good, but it kind of hangs down, so you want to um, layer it maybe with other things. But the reason I made mine this length is because... If I left these little circlets out at the end, it was a little bit too short for me then. So I put them in, and I went ahead and let, let it be a little bit longer. But um, you can eliminate things from it if you have a smaller wrist. You know, just make it tailor it to you. Okay, so now, let me just reach across here real quick. And I'm going to show you, again, the technique for um, distressing this. And it's going to be a little messy, so that was a really stupid thing wearing a white sweater down here. But anyway, I just take my nail buffing look. This is a cheap one like you get at the dollar store. Don't pay a lot of money for these. Or some place you can go get like a whole bag of them for a buck or two. Do that. Okay, so then I just I just kind of maybe put it down, just kind of go around like this. Not really file on it, just kind of buff around on it and just raise the color. You see how it's bringing up the coppery underlayer? By the way, you can't make rusty black at home. It is an artisan finish that you just can't mock it at home because the way it's made, it has this fused copper underlayer. And I don't know how they do it. But it's a process that you're not going to paint on. If you put, like, this is like an iron oxide top. I will tell you that. The rusty top, it's like iron oxide paint. But 
um, you could do that, but if you buff it back, you're just going to get brass. You're not going to get this rosy copper. They don't work that way. Now with her, it's a little bit harder to get her scrubbed back the way you want. Because sometimes this doesn't reach in there. So in that case, what you could do is take your handy dandy ugly wad of steel wool and use that. However you get it to go, I honestly don't care. I just am at the place in my creative life where I say, if it works, it's fine. So long as it's safe. If it's not safe, then, then it doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work if it's not safe. But if it's safe, whoops, I'm jiggling that all around. If it's safe, and you get the effect you want, then nobody can argue with it. And I have spoken on that. <laughs> I did say I was going to face her in, didn't I? Okay, let's put her back. Okay, so now here we go again. What you don't want to do when you do a piece like this that has a lot of relief dimension is because, like, she's got a, her face there. You know, you don't want to get her nose, like, too, too shiny to go with the rest. I don't know. It just, to me, kind of looks stupid. But, hey. Maybe you don't think so. And that's okay, too. See, if you wreck one of these, no big deal. That's fine. See how pretty that's coming out? That's just glowing. You take this piece and it becomes that? Take a little bit more. I mean, that's so awesome. This is what should transform. And in such little time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this bracelet today together so that you can see what it's going to look like and how I go about doing it. It's really a newbies type project, but, you know, it's fun to do. And honestly, a design like this would sell super well. Um, but you do, once you distress any kind of a plated finish, um, usually you need to reseal it. Okay? Same with this spoon I'm going to do later. And you could do that actually, um, if you have it put together, you could actually do it probably with spray lacquer. Javi, could you hand me that? Uh, piece of pudgy whatever it is wipe over there so I can get some of this out of my way. Sorry to do this guys but I don't want that there in the way and rubbing my hand in it. You know anytime you get a dirty work surface like that try and clean it up as you go along a little bit instead of leaving it all nasty for the end because sometimes not always sometimes it does interfere with your work. Sometimes it's not possible to do it but in this case it is so let's do it. Okay now all we have to do is put it together. So I am using these little jump rings. Now I do not carry at this time specific rusty black jump rings. But I have found that there are lots of nice matches for them. And these are actually brass ox. So I am using these brass ox oval jumps and they're very secure and I'm going to work this way. Yeah, it's a little bit clumsy going over the circlet. Are you getting everything, Javi, or am I out of the picture? No, I'm getting everything. Okay, good. Because I, I don't want to leave anything out. A lot of times people say, uh, why don't you work in, like, in front of you onto it? And it's, we can't really, guys, because this table is so wide. Even if we put a tripod on it, it would be hard for Javi to manage it. So this is the best way for us. I just have to develop techniques of keeping my hands out of there. So now I'm going to connect this one. And of course my handshake, because you know I'm a coffee drinker. If you had your cup of joe today, I had mine. It was a while ago, so when we're done with this, I'm going to be ready for another one. I wish you were here to join me. So you can have your cup of joe over there, and I'll have mine, and we'll think of each other. How's that? Not bad. We'll make do, huh, guys? So while I'm hooking this up, I'll tell you about something that's going to happen pretty soon over here. Christy Friesen and Katie Oskin are coming. Now you guys know Katie because we've shot a bunch of uh, Palmer Clay videos together. And she has catersacres.com. And she's a, mostly a sculptor. She's not a big, big jewelry maker. But the techniques she uses lend themselves to jewelry nicely. And so she is gracious enough to come over 
here from PA and we shoot um, the videos together sometimes. She's going to be coming again. I think our date is somewhere at the end of April. We're going to do one. Anywho, um, directly after that, on May 12th, we're all getting together here in Columbiana, Ohio at the Dutch House Inn. Sometimes you need two pliers. That's what I'm doing here to get it flush. You always want to get it as close as you can so you can't see any space. It's perfectly lined up. And that doesn't matter if you're advanced or not. Anyway, getting back to the event. May 12th, everybody's coming in. We're having classes for three days. It's going to be May 13th, 14th, and 15th, the Dutch House Inn. And the first two days, Christy will be teaching glorious new polymer clay techniques. And Katie will be assisting her. Oh, I look so clumsy. I really do know how to do this. Please be nice to me. Be kind. <laughs> I could say whatever works, so long as I get that on their flesh. It doesn't matter that my old hands shake. Okay, so anyway, Christy and, and Katie are coming. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to have open workshop until 9 at night, so it's going to be long days, but fun, action-packed days. And then on Sunday, I am teaching. And I'm teaching something completely different, although you could use polymer clay components in it. And I am teaching wire assemblage. Kind of, sort of like Miriam Haskell style. It won't be that elaborate because I sat, I banged my head for the last year. Everybody last year at the workshop says, oh, we want you to do that. You know what? I can do it. But as you can see, I'm so clumsy with this simple project. I don't know if I want 40 people looking at me and <laughs> watching me do it. I get her done. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I shake. And so, it's not because I have Parkinson's or anything. It's just, I've always been this way. Probably the caffeine. But anywho, I'm going to do it. And we're going to do an easy peasy version of it. And it's going to start the ones who come on a journey. And honestly, after that, I will have so much more confidence. Because I know they'll all be nice to me. And I will have tons of ideas for you. And we're going to take that journey farther. You and me too. But if you can come and join us, um, contact me. You can contact me through my website at bisuboutiques.com through the Contact Us button. Or if you're on Facebook, I always say come join us at the Creative Group. You can contact me there, Brenda Sue Lansdowne, and we can get you set up so that you can see the contract and cost for the event and, you know, where you need to go, what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. But we have a ball. She comes in on Thursday, the day before. And most of the rest do too, because, there we go, because we like to go out to a Mexican restaurant and eat the night before and have a big whoop de doo time. And then um, the Monday after the class is over, Sunday night we have our open house and anyone can come to that. And then uh, Monday morning we have our goodbye breakfast and then I take Christy to the airport and off she goes. Not to return for two years. You know, and I'm not really a polymer clay, uh, you know, artist. I mean, I love clay. I've been playing with clay for 25 years. But I got my own way. And I don't know if I'm going to teach any more clay online because the <laughs> polymer clay community has not liked my methods. But hey, it works. I sold so much stuff I made and people were still wearing it. And that's the point whatever works for you. I have a very wonky organic way, but I love to see how Christy and Katie do it. And so, and the clay goes so nicely with our products. It goes so great with brass, brass damage. So there you go, it's all connected. All ready to go, made into a bracelet. Da -da 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 -da. You might, let's see how this lays. I don't know guys, you might be able to make it into a necklace front. You probably would have to take this rosette out and do something else. Or maybe hook it higher in these two holes. And then you'd have more to drop down. I'll have to try that later. And I'll let you know how that goes. But you could probably make a necklace front of that. But we made a brace. Okay. So all there is left to do now 
let's put something on here. Now, maybe you don't want anything on here. Maybe you're good with it the way it is. And that's just wondrous if you are. But I kind of like the feminine appearance of these little rosies. Okay? And we have stuff like this at the site. I love ceramic roses. Now, you can make polymer clay roses, too. I'm not good at it. i got to show you something. My friend Paula is good at it. And she gifted me a bunch of polymer clay roses. So that's one that Paula made. And some of her, she puts a, an infusion into the polymer clay. She's found a way to do it. And it smells like a rose. I don't know how she does it. That's her secret. This one's pierced to the middle. I'm going to use it in something in a minute. But anyway, these ones Paula didn't make. These are made in the United States, though. And they're vintage. And I love vintage. And, you know, Bisu Boutiques is getting to be a place that has a lot of unique vintage stuff. I have my regular line of things, but uh, we have a lot of unique vintage stuff. But anyway, you, you notice that I'm gluing this very carefully. And I like to have the little leaf sticking up. Okay, guys? Now, I'm not calling out any of these part numbers till we're all done, okay? Because um, some have said it would be nice to just have that at the end. So I'm going to do that. I aim to please if I can. And, of course, I put just a little bit on, and then I kind of push it up gently into position. And then all that has to do is cure. And I try to go back and make sure there's no little glue gobs coming out the side, because that won't look a bit good. I'm, I think I'm fine. Looks good. So I will gently take this and put it over here. So now i got two. That's all right. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what else I was working on. This one was a little bit more touchy, and I don't know if I'm done with it yet, but I'm going to kind of show you the idea. This is that black spoon. Okay. And I think I've done a spoon project before on my videos. It's been a long time, but um, we have a spoon video out. And now these are not spoons that you go to yard sales and antique shops and fleas to get, okay? They're not the old flatware. You can do that, but I like our spoons because they're brass. These were made, actually, to give them a little bit of a story, these were made for the souvenir spoon trade. You know, people have collected those. Maybe your grandma or your mom did. And they made them out of brass, usually. And they were made in the United States. And they still make them, even though souvenir spoons aren't that hot anymore. So I like this one that's a sh sugar shell. And I can't always get it either. Sometimes the dye is down, and I just don't want to pump them out for a while, so we can't get them. But right now, I have a lot of them in black. And I thought it would be kind of cool to use a black one. So this, this one I cut, and I put two of these sprigs in matte black in the bowl layered with one of these little steampunk propellers and I was careful to bend well let me get my hand out I was careful to bend this up so that it still spins believe me it does but this isn't glued down too good so I did this as fresh so I don't want to move it too much I could still oh that's the kitty she is bad okay so later what I'll do is I'll take and maybe set um, some little stones. I might reposition this a little more too. Set some little stones in the depressions or pearls. Whatever looks good with it. Because it's got little depressions and when you have that you probably want to put something in it. It's got a 20 inch Rolo chain and I put a little bead on the back and a matte black lobster. We've got all the parts that match. Jump rings, everything. But anyway, let me show you how to do it. We'll do one together. How's that? Okay. So, what you want to do is get your scissors. These are the Linda and Opie shears. And we had run out, but <clears throat> I made a call the other day. And they'll probably be back today or tomorrow, actually. Um, so, the Linda and Opie shears are super, super sharp. And they cut 24 to 22 gauge metal. Pretty decent. Higher than that, no. But that's this, this is about 22. So I'm going to cut it, you see, right about here. I've discovered this is about, this is a sweet spot, right, right, right in there. After this little swirl, right here, about here. You can see where I cut this one. Let's see if we can put it. See, it's 
see, can you see? Is that showing up, Javi? Mm -hmm. You can see, you can see right where I cut it. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. And it's as easy as just cutting. I mean you have to put a little elbow grease in it, but get your fingers out of the way. Pull them back. Sometimes it takes a little bending too. To kind of soften it up. If this was raw, I'd probably would torch it first and soften it up. You want to try and get it cut straight. Less filing. Millie says hi! Oh, she jumped up on my chair. You just can't keep her out of here. Hi, Millie. So now it's separated. Now, as you'll see, this is rough. So we have to file that. And Millie, you have to be a good, good girl. Okay. So now I'm going to file. Some people don't like how I file. But the main thing is, as long as it's safe, and as long as it works. And this is what works for me. And when I first start doing this, first start nicking on it, I want to get these rough spots off, most of all. This part won't matter so much as we're bending it. We're going to bend it under. You know what? You can't be on here. <laughs> she is so awful. Oh, darling, I don't want to drop you. Okay. She's a ham. She wants in the picture. Okay, so I'm just... I'm not... I'm not doing this against it. I'm doing this. Okay. File away from yourself. And get that just smooth down. Okay, let's get in there. Okay, so now i got to do the other way. So turn it over so I can file away from myself. File away. Keep your fingers out of the way or else put that stuff on them, you know, that you can wrap around your fingertips. If you're doing a lot of this, you might want to do that to keep your fingers. I'm the clumsy filer. I don't do a lot of filing. I bet you figured that out. <laughs> I don't usually have to. You know why? Because I have found that in a lot, a lot, a lot of cases, this isn't one of them, but in many, many cases, whoops, steel wool, the quadruple odd steel wool works just fine, or else one of these nail buffing blocks, but it won't work for this. And of course, you want to be careful you don't nick it, nick up your finish unless you're going to distress it. In this case, I am going to distress it. So... Whatever. But this is just a good lesson in showing you that even if you're a little clumsy or your hands shake a little bit, you can still make jewelry just fine. And like I say, whatever works, as long as it's safe, go for it. Okay, I'm going to distress this a little bit first. This is the easy part. This is kind of fun and I like. So I brought up the back. Looks like he might even do a little bit of copper coating underneath this black too. But if you do like uh, black spray paint on brass, you're going to get, you can distress it after it cures, but you're going to get yellow. My guy that does this, he's the prince of players and he knows it. And he's more expensive than other players, but I pay it because I don't want garbage. I want good finishes. And I would assume you do too. So that's how that goes. You get what you pay for. Okay, so this is ready to go. Now, I found something really cool that my wolf pliers can be used to bend this back instead of... Um, using a bell making pliers. I mean, you can use the bell making pliers I used to, but anyway, I'm going to show you how I do it. I bend this up, and right about here, where the three little last dots are, I'm going to start bending it over. Now, you want to be careful, because you don't want to get it, like, all marked and fine, but you see how I'm moving out toward the end to kind of make an arc? Going slowly, making my arc. Now I'm going to turn it around. 
These chain nose pliers are the most amazing things. They're just as good as very, very expensive pliers. They're not um, super inexpensive, but they're not super expensive. I have a set of them for around forty dollars, so like twenty a piece. But for decent pliers, geez, that's nothing. And they hold up well. This pair I've had, I don't know how many years. Probably been working with it constantly for the last six anyway. So now I'm going to bend that up a little. I don't want this flat back too much because what will happen is the bowl of the spoon will flip out this way when you wear it and it will look kind of dumb. So you want it to come back. So what I'll do to compensate is I'll pull this forward just a little bit. Okay. And then I'll tuck this under. That's my bail. You just made a bail, guys. You know what I've even done is I've even taken and cut, if I needed a bail really bad, because I hate to ruin the spoon, if I need a bail really bad, I'll cut that middle piece off and make this flatter and use it for a bail on something. If I need like something really big that needs super support. Anyway, there I go. I've got it. You know, that could be bent a little more. And then back. Okay, let's see. Yes, I like how that's laying now. That's good. That's a good one. And you can always adjust it, you know, so don't worry. This here probably needs a shim under it because it is not behaving good. I'm going to take this cameo and make it a shim for now. Okay, so now I do the same thing for this, what I've cut off. Is this the one I filed? No. Yes, this is the one. I, I filed this. This is pre-filed. Okay, so I'm going to distress that. We're going to go through that exercise one more time. This is the end of it. See, the thing is with the spoon is you get two projects. You get, um, I got to my bag of spoons. Get in here. You get two projects, see. That's why buying the spoon is so cool because you get two things from it. You get, oops, let me put it here. You get the bowl of the spoon, the sugar shell to build something into. You can put anything in there, flowers, pearls, you know, little images, whatever you got. And then the other end, you can put a little pendant. Okay, so that's how that goes. Okay, so. So that's nicely distressed. Okay, I don't know why my nose wants to run down here. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with my wolfies. I'm going to start right about the middle here. I'm just going to start building an arc. Building an arc. Like no built the arc. No, different. <laughs> An arc. A R K as opposed to A R C. Like a rainbow. Arcoiris. Right, honey? Arcoiris. Yo vi un arcoiris. I saw a rainbow. Okay, so now someday I'm gonna get really bold and you're gonna tune in. And I'm going to do my tutorial in Spanish. That'll be a hoot. I have to get Joyce over here for that one. <laughs> That's Javi's mom. They're from Chile. Okay. Whoops. Don't do that. But it'll happen. Just be careful. Get hold of it. Maybe go back a little bit. Okay, now we're bending it. And you won't crack this. This is this is heavy enough brass. You just want to get it lined up good so that it goes in the middle. See that? I did score it a little bit, but that's okay because we're distressing this. Okay, there you go. I've got a nice bale. I might tamp with this a little bit more later to get it down flat. But you see how I've got it lined up so nicely in the back? Yeah. And there's a nice place for me to sign my name too. Woohoo! So now what I would do with that one. This isn't steampunk, but it's pretty. Is I have this lovely German vintage button stone that's flat on the back. Okay? And it fits just right over that. So I'm going to take and I'm going to glue that on with some good old E6000. And I like these little mini tubes because I have more control with them. 
Now I want to line that up because there's kind of a star pattern to it. Let me get my hands on the way. I've got to remember that. Sorry, guys. Many apologies for that. And it's about in the middle, yes. Okay, but do you see I've got like this depression there? I've got, I've got to fill that or do something with it. It doesn't look good to leave it like that. So I had this very lovely metalized antique gold rose. And this is vintage too. We have them on the website. And we will have these German stones shortly. Shelly just has to get them on. Um, so now I'm going to move that into position over top. And I think that looks kind of sweet. And then all I have to do is decide what kind of uh, chain I want and you know how I want to hook it up or whatever. That's it. So that went together easy. Now this one's a little bit hard. The first one I made, I had, I may have to redo this because I, I have some glue showing and I really don't like that. So, but I wanted to put this in the middle. I thought that looked so cool. So what I'm going to do, first thing I want to do is I take my little sprig and I just dress it. And of course, you know, it might be good not to sand your fingers. So if you're going to be doing a lot of distressing, you might want to get something on your hands to protect your skin. But I'm not doing too much today. So you see, I bent the, the little sprigs. I bent them. And so now I have to figure out how can I get this to seat down in there nice. I'm kind of cupping it. Okay, that's going to go pretty well. You know, you can always adjust the, the little petals later. Now, we're going to see if I really need the double layer. I'm going to try and experiment with you. So now I'm going to glue this. You can't put too much glue, but you got to get enough so it'll stay. And if you wanted to do this in steps, you could stop here. Excuse me and clamp it. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time, but you could do that. This other one, I may take apart and do that. Okay, now, what I thought I might do to build this center up so that the propeller would go, I have an acorn cap. Bee caps can be so useful. You can do so many things with them. I'm going to glue this. See if fumble fingers can do this without getting all over the place. And get in, you have to you have to pretty much fill the cap so it does make a bit of a mess. So now quickly get that down in there. Aha, success. I think we're going to be good. And this way I don't need the double layer, which got a little bit clumsy on that one. Okay, so now I have that. Now why did I do that? Because I found you need to lift this up a little bit, this little propeller guy and he fits right down over there. Uh-huh. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to bend this just a, a light, little bit slightly, only slightly, because I want to be sure that it'll still twirl because that's part of the fun of it, you know, and that would be a selling point too. Let's see, have I loosened the rivet? No, it's fine. Okay, so now I need to glue this onto there. And this is where it gets tricky too because you don't want that glue coming through there. In fact, I'm going to clean some of this glue off the top of here. Okay. Now, I'm going to put, starting from the bottom, because I'm going to squeeze it from the middle. Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum. And I'm going to get enough in there. I don't want to really fill this whole thing, but enough in there so it'll take. In fact, I may. You will want to push some of that in and take a little out. Because I don't want it pushing out around the edges. If it does, I'll live. I can clean it up, but I'd rather not go through that. I've already made a little bit of a mess there. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I should have brought those toothpicks over this way. Okay. All right. I can take care of that later. That's no big deal. Now, moment of truth. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Necessity, the mother of invention. When something isn't working, you look for something to make it work. And it was that bead cap. So voila. Now the only thing is you got to be sure it's seated down in there straight, not lopsided, because that's what it's going to want to tend to do. And I think you're good. Let's see, it's still moving. Not sticking anywhere. Okay. So this is, I think this, I don't know, you decide. Do you like it with the double sprig? It's kind of pretty and dimensional, or the single sprig. I think the single spread sprig is more effective. And it'll cost you less to make, too. But anyway, then what you'll do is once this is set up, you want to set some little pearlies or some flatbacks, about a three millimeter flatback. We have some at the site, but you probably have some in your own stash, too, that you could use. Um, maybe find a pretty color. Topaz, hyacinth, maybe. Don't know. You, you figure it out. Let me know. Anywho, that's how you make that. So we've got today, for today's class, on video. Let me put my cap off my E6000. We have made spoon pendants, like a little soft steampunk style, pretty Victoriana steampunk. Here's one with the rose and the German cab. There's a pendant there. And we made this lovely Art Nouveau lady face bracelet with the little ceramic roses that went together so easily that I was able to talk to you about something else entirely while I hooked it up together. So, what do you think? You want to try one? Well, you may have some of these parts at home in your stash already, but if you don't, we do have the good stuff at BeesaBoutiques.com and a lot of people do know want, do want to know where to get these things so I'm going to tell you. First thing, this little circlet I don't have the number for but you'll find it. If you just type circlet into the search box you'll see they come in a package of six. This little tiny, I can't live without these. And then this is your connector and it is RB 01562 and Javi will put that on the video for you. RB01562. The rosette, which is, I've, I'm always selling out of these. RB06621. The lady is RB06608. Alright? And then we have the Copper, coppery, antique copper, lobster claws. We have um, matte black. We have brass ox. Any of those will match. And then I used brass ox links on it, and it went together just fine. It, it looks like a very, very fine match, so that's good. So you got it for the bracelet. And then, for the parts for this, I use this spoon. And we have lots of them. And it's BLK. 09502 BLK 09502 and as we discussed you will get two projects or two pendants from this when you cut it right about here okay and then the way that I built my spoon up is I use the German cab and the antique rose you don't have to do that if you have a, a nice round stone about a 13 millimeter you're gonna be great just go ahead and do that well, you make it your own you do what you want um, the sprig once again, I don't have the number down here. Do it. Yes, I do. The sprig is BLK09504. BLK09504. That's this piece. Okay. And like I see, this is very malleable. Just bend it up. Bend it back down, however you want. And then the last little piece in that that we use for the focal, once again, you would not have to use that. You could use a stone. You could use pearls. You could use a rose, whatever. I was going to maybe stick this in there. Here, I'll put it in there. You can get an idea. One of Paula's roses would have been pretty. Okay. But, anyway, I use the silverware pen of uh, spinner uh, propeller, and we have lots of them. And that is SILWAR06253. SILWAR06253. Okay. None of these projects are very expensive. I do believe um, 
they are things that would sell well for you and you could make money on and as you can see it didn't take that much time to make so anyway go off and try it have some fun today make something for yourself or a friend or something to sell and get some of your investment and in time and money back and just keep on making that jewelry because it's a wonderful fun hobby and it's also a great way to make a supplemental income some even do it for a living you can do that too if you have that dream but remember a dream is only a dream until you do the work so get out there and do the work and you have a good day we'll see you next time